Hello, Forest Hills friends and family. This is Teresa Edwards here with you on Tuesday for your daily spiritual check-in. I was thinking recently about a vacation that my family and I took when our daughter Corinne was much younger. We went on a cruise and we got off at one of the ports, I think it was in Mexico or somewhere like that, and we were looking around at all the shops and all the sites. And I got separated from John and Karim. They had gone off and looked in some store, and I was turning the other way. And the next thing I know, they weren't there. And I cannot express to you the panic and the fear that struck my heart when I did not know where my two most beloved people in the world were in a city that I had never visited in another country it scared me to death, and I looked and looked and finally found them and was so upset, I just said, we need to go back to the ship because I've had enough of this town. To be separated from the ones we love can literally strike fear in our hearts. As human beings, the truth is, no matter how many times we're told God loves us, God loves us completely. God loves us abundantly. We can feel separated from the love of God. We can tell ourselves that we're unworthy of the love of God. Even though God is offering us love all the time, sometimes we simply can't receive it. John Wesley taught that there were five marks of a Methodist. And the first mark is this, a Methodist loves God. Now that sounds really simple, right? I have found in my 51 years that things that sound really simple generally are not. So I want you to hear these words about a Methodist loves God from the book Five Marks of a Methodist. The author writes, we are dearly loved by God, and nothing can separate us from that love. The most radical kind of love possible, unconditional, unrelenting, unending, and unbelievable! Exclamation point. The first mark of discipleship, the first mark of being a Methodist, isn't a call to increase our love towards God but to receive God's love. The ability to love God comes from God. Wesley called this prevenient grace. This is no self-help effort, no intensification of our devotion through a spiritual version of trying harder. The call to love God is a call extended by none other than God. The desire to respond with love is a desire that God put in us. As Eugene Peterson put it, First God, God is the subject of life. God is the foundation for living. If we don't have a sense of the primacy of God, we will never get it right, get life right, get our lives right. Not God at the margins, nor God at, as an option. Not God on the weekends. God at the center and the circumference. God first and last. God, God, God. Amen. So God puts this in us through the work of grace that we can receive love and love God in return. That first step, we can receive the love of God that is already being offered moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, year by year into our lives. In the book of Romans, there's a familiar passage. And it reminds me, as I think about that little story of being separated from my loved ones, that I can never be separated from God and God's love for me. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, 
nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us, me, you, from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in the midst of pandemic, you are loved. Today, ask for God's grace to receive the love that Christ offers to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is available to you right now. You are loved, my friend, with an abundant love beyond your comprehension. Will you believe it? Will you receive it? Blessings.